All right, so here's the deal. Uh, synapsis, crossing over, right? When we say, uh, we said if these were homologous chromosomes, they pair up so they can properly separate. They pair up so they can properly separate. Prophase one is the most important stage of meiosis because it allows for the paternal and maternal. What does that mean, paternal and maternal? Mom and dad. All right, so let, let's think about it like this, all right? Look at, let's show synapsis in action. So there's a whole list of chromosomes. Here they are. <coughs> right, we're talking about humans, but this happens for every organism. Uh, if they do sexual reproduction, which is like all living things have a version of it, even bacteria have a means of sexual reproduction, exchanging genes from two sources, fusion of genes or exchanging genes. Okay, so as, it, as you watch, this they pair up. So really what synapsis, now what I'm showing you is a karyotype, which is listing chromosomes in order from largest to smallest, except for the sex chromosomes. Now, Yes. What makes the difference between the, like, so the, those ones, why does X have to be there? Okay, why does X have to be there? Okay, watch this one. That first one that you just saw was a female. Oh. Females are double Xers, okay, males are single Xers. Okay. They only got one X chromosome. Yeah. So what they do for karyotype, they just put a slot to put all the chromosomes. And uh, remember I showed you this earlier to show you, here's a male, this would be diploid, haploid. When meiosis happens, they send one of their chromosomes to the next generation. So if this is a male karyotype, and for a showing diploid, meaning they have both homologous chromosomes, this would be haploid. So this particular person sent, you can even predict which one it sent. What did it send? It sent a Y, no X. So this would be like the karyotype of the sperm cell, all right? So I've used this as homologous chromosomes, this example. So now imagine this being male. So this happens for every single one of the chromosomes. One of them gets sent to the reproductive cell during meiosis, okay? And your sperm. So if this is female, she sends an X or another X. If this is male, he sends an X or a Y. I mean, this will represent Y now. So X to his daughters, Y to his sons. Right? I last year someone said, why can't they send an X? Well, they can. They send an X to their daughters. If they send an X to their sons, then their sons are daughters. That makes sense, but yeah. All right. I, I've used that joke a lot, and I will use it again when we talk about sex length traits. Okay. So, back to this. Let's... So, why does the, the X have to be like... Is there a specific one that you can differentiate from the other? Yes. You guys, you can differentiate every chromosome from other pairs. So let's do this first. Let's, uh, all right, uh, what did the other hand out left side or right side said fraternal? Okay. So this is the fraternal chromosome. This is the maternal. All right, now uh, this is what I want you to try and grasp from this. This is, the, this is, <coughs> if this was just how they separate, you'd have incredible diversity. However, you get more diversity by having chromosomes exchange pieces. Let's go back to this for a second. So we're looking at one set of chromosomes. Know that what, when this is occurring, it's actually happening for all of them. And there's actually one exception. The X chromosome and Y, they don't do crossing over. They're different sets of genes. So they're not going to. These are all the same genes. Let's look at it like this. So, all right, if you look at the little band, all right, there's a little band here. Say this is a, well, this is a gene that we'll just label A. And we'll label it a capital A. We'll label it let a lowercase a. So all the genes, everyone that are on this chromosome, get sent to the next generation. The handout shows that. Let's take a look at this. The handout shows us, see, these are homologous pairs of chromosomes, meaning maternal or paternal. And here's like letters here, and here's letters here. They're showing crossing over, which is the exchange of a part of the chromosome. Now, what I want you to grasp from this is, let's go this one first. All right, so when this particular sperm cell, or this feature for sperm cell is what I should say, this is because there's a, a Y. If this was a female, it would be an egg, feature egg. So it's going to send eight, it's going to send that or this one, the paternal or the maternal, to the, to the next generation, to the egg cell, or I'm um, sorry, sperm cell, because the Y. 
Now that's happening. Let's so that's fraternal maternal. Now obviously it doesn't really happen this way, but if we were to label everything was P and M, P, M. So when you do meiosis, say the eight sent the part maternal, but maybe nine sent the maternal. Oh. Or may and there are three. This picture creates diversity. This is why you are not a clone of your parents. You are a mutant. You are a fusion of two gene sets of genes. Now what adds it even more? What makes it even more complex? Take a look at this. Let's go back to this. So there's, this is the paternal, this is the maternal. Let's say this is the chromosomes of your parents. Where did this chromosome come from for your parents? Your grandpa. There, yeah, so this is really your grandpa's chromosome and this is your grandma's chromosome. If this was the karyotype of your parents. Now, so what happens? You really are this pair of chromosomes. One of them goes, one, this one or this one goes to you. But it doesn't go a straight line. They actually exchange pieces. So if this is grandpa and you and this is grandma and you get grandpa's chromosome, you don't get pure grandpa's chromosome that the parent got. You get you get a little bit of grandpa's and a little bit of grandma's combined. You literally are the fusion. And this has happened for every homologous pair of chromosomes. Now, we have 23 pairs. We know what happens for 22 of them doesn't happen for the X's because they're different sets of genes, X and Y. And this is what creates a unique diversity. I show this all the time. So here's, here's grandpa, here's grandma. One of them is going to you. Except they exchange little pieces before they do meiosis. Hey, oh, come on, you got it. Right. You guys know I drift. Get on my lunch. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, so yes. not only so go back to what I said about P and M being separated, but not only before that, P and M exchange pieces before they do that. And this is I had a professor in college who told me the mathematically, the chances of someone being identically uh, genetically identically to you is one in a zillion. That actually must have been how it happened. Yes. Huh? Wait, so okay. the Mathematical probability of someone else having been on this planet with the exact combination of genes, exactly like you, identically like you, is one in a zillion. But it has what you're going to ask, wait. To that, to that. Okay. You're truly a genetically unique individual. You're the only, you know, you're the only combination that will ever be on this planet. Uh, Except if you're an identical twin. And now what we're learning more is mm -hmm. identical twins have certain s variations on how they express genes because of the field of epigenetics. So let's start there first. What's confusing that? Okay. So be one, on in one in a zillion. One in a zillion. That's a big exception. Okay, look at statistically. The, I don't know the actual numbers on, uh, I don't have them right now on, on twins, but the, twins aren't as frequent as non-twins. You see more non-twins are in the population. Yeah. Okay, so I gave you a handout earlier where we asked certain questions, and on these we asked true-false questions. We're not going to go over every single one, but it relates to this and the statement I just said that is blowing his mind right now. Okay, so question number eleven said identical twins are always the same sex. True or false? False. True. true. Identical. Okay. I want to. I'm going to put this all together with what I just said about the silk crossing over thing. You have a question? You're. Uh, no, I just, um, like, I just, you know, okay. So the other question was. Uh, so question twelve was: Fraternal twins are more closely related to each other than o other children in the family. False. False. Because aren't they just like random children that happen to sort of be born together? Yes, they're random children that happen to be born together. Okay, so let's start with that. Identical twins. One egg, one sperm. There's a stage called uh, development, uh, what, when the blastula, it's called a blastula, and when what happens is egg and sperm fuse together, and they're divide, divide, divide. But the genes have not started to differentiate into specialized tissue. During that stage, the, it split, before that differentiation stage, it splits. I, I need to look up the exact numbers, but it's very early on. It splits, and they are in the womb, same environment. They're being exposed to the same hormones, so their genes turn on at the same time. They have all the same exact genes, and their genes turn on at the same time during embryonic development, right? during that gestation period, from the time 
of conception until uh, being born. Fraternal twins, two separate eggs, two separate sperm. Couldn't they technically be from different dads? Okay, if we're saying, all right, no, the question was saying that they're more alike, so. Yes, that has, that's been documented, but let's, let's, let's save the Springer questions for later. All, all right. right, so, fraternal twins, two separate eggs, two separate sperm. That means the mother during ovulation released two eggs and both of them got fertilized. They are no more alike than any other children from the same set of parents. They are no more genetically identical than any parents from the same set of, any children than the same set of parents. Does that make sense? I mean, but you hear, oh, well, the twins, they're so much alike, they're so much alike. Well, number one, they're probably, if they're in the same household, they're going to be raised the same way, same values and how they're being brought up, and they're going through the same life experiences at the same time. That's what makes them more alike. Because fraternal twins, because it's two separate eggs, two separate sperm, that's why you can have separate genders. And everybody's, oh, well, the twins, there, there's something unique about them. Either a boy and a girl, but they're, they're so much more alike. Well, they're going through life experiences. Now, how many of you have younger siblings at home? Or have siblings that are like five years older than you or something like that? You can relate more to your class colleagues than you can a three-year-old at this point in your life. One of the reasons why the twins are so much alike is because they're going through life experiences at the same time. So you can relate more to someone having to do my homework than a two-year-old at home just trying to just walk without bumping their head in the wall. <laughs> so, yes? Does the they come from the same Okay, so in the past I used this example. I made a YouTube video earlier where I said, like, imagine each one of the light panels being a chromosome, right? Mm -hmm. It started out as a blank slate. You have just the genetic material. Not all the genes are on at the same time. So, you so say this is that big ball of cells, right? And it's dividing, dividing, dividing. And then what happens? See my fingers start to indent down. That's what I mean by express. They start. These become the genes that become, say, your digestive tract. That's what I mean. They express the genes that code for producing stomach cell versus, say, skin cell happens. That's what I mean by gene expressing. <coughs> Remember, we just took a test on transcription and translation, right? So that happens. Like, say, 95% of the time, the genes are tightly packed and they're not exposed. Uh, I did another video when I remember I unraveled what I showed the nucleotides. If they're not, if they're wrapped up, not exposed, they're not transcribed and they're not translated. So gene expression is doing transcription translation. All right, so. They're, so they're developing at the same time. Now what we've learned is, with there's a field called epigenetics. It's an incredible field. And what we've learned is the environment of the mother actually can cause genes to sway certain directions. It's actually natural selection and action. In, uh, it's because uh, certain genes will turn on uh, during that gestation period. Well, twins are in the same period, same area, so they're going to be developed at the same time. You, identical twins means they have the same genes, but it doesn't mean throughout their life they're going to express the genes at the same time. There's certain things that uh, uh, the environmental response that triggers a gene to go on and off. You can't recreate that circumstance. You can't say, put all, make, unless they follow each other everywhere for their whole life, there's, there's one's going to be exposed to something that another one won't. So yes, they're going to have the same fingerprints. But even eye color, eye color, the pigment can change over time. Certain environmental factors can trigger that. So well, their eye color might be slightly different. They, that's one of the first indicators of telling the difference between twins is they could look at eyes, at the retinas, they saw subtle fluctuation in the color of the eyes. Right? But in, in general, uh, that's why one twin can get cancer and another one won't. Because there are certain ones that are expressing genes that triggered that cancer versus the uncontrolled mitosis versus ones that didn't. They, maybe, maybe they weren't exposed to that trigger or the gene turned on or off. So. And so back to this, this outside of identical twins, because of crossing over, you are genetically unique. You're the only combination that will ever exist on this planet. 